Hey everyone, it's Rajiv and welcome to my channel Rajiv's Reviews. In this video, I'm going to be giving my book review of Arusha and the End of Time by Roshni Choksi. Now, Arusha and the End of Time is the first book in Rick Riordan's own publishing company called Rick Riordan Presents. And it is also the first in the series of the Pandava Quartet series. The story revolves around this girl named Aru who feels that she is very bored with her life and she's not able to make any friends because she lives in the Indian Museum of Art and Culture which her mom curates. When she tries to make friends, she lies about how glamorous her lifestyle is and unfortunately she gets caught for her lies. So when three of her classmates come to the museum to confront Aru about her lying, uh, she tries to impress them by talking about the various artifacts in the museum. One of the items is the cursed lamp of Bharata. Now, even though her mom has warned her not to go anywhere near the lamp, Aru decides to impress her friends and lights the lamp. But by lighting the lamp, she also awakens this demon called the sleeper, who is intent on waking up the god of destruction. Aru then realizes that she is the reincarnate of one of the five Pandava brothers and the only way to stop the sleeper is for Aru and her friend who is another reincarnate of the Pandava to go to the kingdom of death in order for things to become normal again. This book was just so much fun to read. I love reading Rick Riordan novels and I am a huge fan of the Percy Jackson series. And being an Indian, I also thought it was so cool for them to incorporate this book with the same style but with Hindu mythology in it. From the first chapter itself, when Aru accidentally lights the lamp, we are pushed into this world of adventure. There are just so many things happening in the plot, one after the other after the other, that there is just never a dull moment. Each quest that the girls encounter is so unique and so intense that you just cannot put the book down and you have to like read on to find out what happens. There are so many interesting characters that the team meets along the way during their quest and each of these characters represents someone from the Hindu mythology in such a quirky manner. I just loved the story. The characters themselves are fun, brave and so funny at times. I don't think I've ever laughed so much in a middle grade novel as I have done while I was reading this book. I especially loved Minnie and how paranoid she gets from all the diseases that she thinks she might contract. Boo is also such an interesting character in that he is so funny with his sarcasm but at the same time he is so protective of the girls and wants to do everything for them. Not only for the humor, there is also a lot of character development that happens in the story where we find out who the sleeper actually is and how he is related to Aru. The book also ends in such a cliffhanger like manner where we are introduced to two more new characters, one who is a thief and the other one who is a romance interest for Aru but both of them could be related to her in some way or part of the other world. So it just makes you want to pick up the next book in the series and continue reading. The world building is so amazing and of course it has themes of the same world building in a Rick Riordan novel. If you actually compare the two books there are quite a lot of similarities in that like how the gods are depicted as a little silly because of the attire that they wear but they are still represented in a larger than life manner. Each chapter heading also has a quirky tagline similar to what you would read in Rick Riordan novels. So even though Roshni Choksi would have borrowed this formula from his novels to maintain the theme of the publishing company I guess, she has still managed to add her own touch to the story and make it her own. I absolutely loved her style of writing and I think the main reason why she stands out is because of her uniqueness to the humor that she adds to the characters, situations and their dialogues. Now I've read a few other reviews on the same book, uh, particularly from other Indians who are very shocked and revolted on how shabbily the deities are depicted. Okay, so Valmiki is depicted as a hipster and Hanuman is wearing Hawaiian clothes and the seasons all like taking Instagram selfies and even Shakuni is a pigeon, but that's 
the whole fun of it. This really did not bother me because the whole point of reading any book is introduce the reader to a new world of characters and just to spark their interest to read more if they are. If you really wanted to read the authentic tales of Ramayana or Mahabharata then you would have probably not picked up this book in the first place anyway because this does not mean to depict the accuracy of that. It's kind of paying an homage to it in a very fun and humorous manner but I don't know why people are growing it out of proportion and making such a big deal out of it. It is always fun and interesting to read stories from someone else's perspective instead of reading the same type of characters and situations. Anyway to conclude it's so refreshing to see strong female characters take on the Hindu mythology in a very humorous manner in this fast-paced fantasy adventure novel. I absolutely loved reading Arusha and the End of Time and would give it a 5 out of 5 star rating. If you enjoyed watching this video then please do give a like and do subscribe to my channel. You can also click on the bell notifications icon to get notifications on whenever I post something new. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!